So let's start by <clears throat> just quickly running through some examples and showing what's possible. So here's one. Initialize everything. Go okay, here, I'll initialize the uh, performance as well. So, of course, what you just heard were examples of what you can do once you really get to know layer and the app sequencer. Um, and they're quite advanced, but it, it, you know, they're examples of what can be done. Uh, so, if I start from the beginning uh, and show how the sequencer works, then you can go away and easily work out how to create these masterpieces. So there are two ways of getting at the ARP. <laughs> One is to tap the arpeggio button in the master strip, and the other is to swipe up on the background of the instrument mixer, or pretty much anywhere else in layer, <coughs> if you have the swiping options turned on in settings. Um, and so that reveals the arpeggio sequencer, um, which consists of two parts. Uh, the input notes, which are called the chord, uh, are input on one single MIDI channel, which you select down here in the usual way by dragging or <coughs> tapping and typing. And you see, you play a chord and that chord goes into this sequencer as the notes that the sequencer will operate on. And the sequencer contains uh, a grid with divided into 16 sections, which rep represents six, one sixteenth note um, in one bar, uh, with events in it, each track. And it has eight tracks and the same chord is input to each track, but the Tracks can output on any MIDI channel, so you can play up to eight different sets of instruments in the performance. And tracks can be either MIDI controller events or note events. So you can automate parameters in layers using MIDI controllers, or you can play out the notes from the chord <coughs> using note events and you choose which of those you want which either one of those you want using the notes and cc columns you tap on the notes column and it switches between cc and notes for that track uh, and of course you select the controller by dragging or typing and that's the controller number that will be controlled in the lane and let's start with notes. So this sequence is a note event followed by a loop. 
So it will play one sixteenth note again and again and again on one track. So it's input the chord to that by enable the sequencer by pressing the play button, play a chord, and you get a sequence which is an arpeggio. You set the output channel on on this column here, and you can tap on the mode track mode column to set the mode up, down, up, down, as played, random. Let's go through those. So this we've had up and down, this is up. And down, of course. As played is the notes, the order that the notes come in over MIDI. And random, just picks random note from the chord. Oops, that's as played. And the... So, that's the most basic sequence possible. Um, I suppose you could make it even simpler by taking out the loop, but then you'd play out the whole bar and you'd get one sixteenth note played at the beginning of each bar. Let's put it on up and down again. So, if you select an event by tapping on the square that the event is in, starts in, you can then set some parameters of the event. And on note events, you can set the velocity and the length. And uh, <coughs> the length, let's make a big long note. So we can play one whole bar. If we put more notes in, let's put uh, quarter notes in. So tap here, oops, select the note event, make it a quarter note. If you delete an event, then when you play it by, if you, you can toggle notes on and off, <coughs> sorry, you can toggle events on and off by tapping on them. Um, and then it will remember that event and allow you to copy it. So you can do, make quick copies like that. So there we have one track <coughs> playing notes out of the chord up and down to one channel, channel one. So let's set the next channel track to channel two. Go back to the instrument mix and add another instrument which we'll put on channel two. Oh, this on Omni, let's put them like this. So we have one instrument playing channel one and now we have one instrument playing channel two. So if we go back to here, let's put in um, two longer notes here. So now we have one, the same chord will be played, but at different speeds. So channel two will go up half as fast as channel one, up and down half as fast as channel one. So you kind of start building up nice sort of polyrhythmic and uh, melodic chords. So we do that for yet another instrument, channel three. Uh, yeah, and put in a big long event here. Oh, that's a play of channel two, not channel three. There we are. Um, up and down. Let's put them all on random. See if you can work out what's going on here. They're, each track would be playing at random now. There we are. When you first press the chord down, um, it, the sequence starts again, so... So it's quite simple really, as long as you can 
get your head around that you're playing the notes out of the chord and you're playing them according to the rule of the mode that's selected in the mode channel. So you could have one going up, one going down, and another playing randomly. And you get the magic roundabout theme tune. And uh, you can also select the speed which the tracks are playing at. So let's double the speed of the uh, first track. Uh, and half the speed of the third track, say. So that's the basic note event. Um, let's reinitialize. <clears throat> Back to. Want it slow. Right. Um, so, what else can you do? You've got repeat notes. Let's, let's look at those. That's the looper. Let's put in a repeat note. Let's put in some notes here. Oops. And here and here. So now we've got four sixteenths notes playing in the bar. Uh, if we put in a repeat, it'll repeat the last note that's played. So that's how the repeat works. And the loop you can put anywhere you like, <laughs> and it loops from that point. So if you want shorter bars than 16, so you can you can sort of do odd time signatures using the loop, which is cool. Um, skip. Let's put in some skip events. No, let's put a note event there. Let's put a skip event here. No, let's take a note there and a skip event in the middle. So skip skips over the next note. is sometimes useful if you want to just add a bit more interest to some sequence to arpeggios. And finally, the most complicated one, which isn't hard to understand, but it's easy once you understand what it's doing, it's called the indexed note. So if I just put in four index notes here, now <clears throat> index notes play the notes from the chord, starting from one at the first note that's input two, for the second one, three for the third one, four for the fourth one, etc. <clears throat> and if you've got more, and if you go higher, it, it kind of does modulo. So five would be one, six would be two. Um, so again, so this time you can actually select which note in the chord you want to play. So if you've got like here four notes holding down, you can have the first one play chord one, ah, note one. The second one could be playing. Note three, no, note four, it's maybe note four. So I can play note two, so I can play note three. So now we play a melody. So I think I was playing note three, should be. Oh. So for using that, you can actually choose the note in the chord that you want to play. And if you use that, the index note, the index event, along with key span you can have individual instruments playing on single notes and you can do things like the drum kit that you heard so that's all the note events so let's look at controllers let's assign a controller to something let's go back to an initial uh, performance and I'll just quickly set up a square way so we can hear something nice. Yeah. And if I assign a MIDI controller one to the filter. There we are. So go back to the arpeggiator. Um, 
and put in some controller events and also playing out of channel one oops control event control event control event control event so now we're playing controller one and it's outputting value zero each time that the event is played so if we change the values Um, and one of the things you can do is you can go all the way up to 128 and it turns into random. There we are. So what the, with the random event, this is a little Easter egg this is, that'll play random values out of the control. So there you are. That's that's basically how it all works. It's really quite simple when you get to know it. And you can build up the sort of powerful sequences. Let's choose one. A simple one. Fairly simple one. This one's fairly simple. So we've got five instruments playing on different channels. Stop it. Oh, I haven't shown you hold. I've just been playing notes on the keyboard at the moment. If you press hold, then notes when you play them are toggled on and off when MIDI is received. So press the note once to turn it on, press it again to turn it off. Play a whole chord. Also, use the internal keyboard to do the same thing. So that's basically how it works. And you can toggle hold on and off in the master strip as well. This the button for the sequencer has two sections, where the first one opens and closes it, and the other one does the hold on and off. So that's a sort of shortcut for it. So one last thing. If um a sequence is playing when you save it. Then the next time you load it, it will start playing automatically. So that, that's how you get them to start uh, when when you um, <clears throat> when you load them. You, you basically, if you save a sequence while it's playing, then it will start automatically when it's next loaded. Um, that's that's about it for the sequencer, I think. Uh, I can't think of anything else at the moment. If there is, I'll add it to the video later.